got me some Jimmy John's and I'm going fishing. That's a bear holding a fish. Son of a Well, I just got to the lake and it's uh it's windy. You I'm sure the I'm sure the mics on this are just great. Great quality. Hopefully the audio of this entire uh, video doesn't suck. And if it does, I'm sorry. But I made it to the lake, as you can see there. My poles all, all rigged up, tackles in there. I'm fishing alone for about 30 minutes and then my friend Alec, the guy who has the fire ponds, he is joining me and we're gonna fish until dark. This wind might be good. It might, it, it might be good or, or it could just make this entire lake garbage. I guess we're about to find out. Before I went out, I wanted to show you guys the new toy that I got. Check this thing out. It's called a deck system. There's like two of them. I just installed this thing last night. I also have the Leer cap with the Leer locker. I haven't really talked much about this. I wanted to wait till I got this before I talked about it. And I'll, I'll, I might go over more of it in, in future videos. But for those of you guys wanting more information on this, I'll link link the websites to get this and the, uh, the topper down in the description. But I've been getting a few questions about the topper and I just wanted to uh, show you guys that sick new toy I got. All right, so I made it on the water. It is way, 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 way windier than they said it was gonna be. This is by far the windiest I've ever fished in, in on this lake. Things might get kind of interesting. I'm just gonna start off the chatterbait because really that's about the only thing you can throw, something that shucks and whines. And Alec will be here in probably 20 minutes, 15 minutes. So I'll see if I can catch one fish before he gets here. But this, this wind is probably making this audio absolutely garbage. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? This was such a bad idea. Wow. All right, plan B. I can't even fish. Like I literally can't even fish right here. I'm just gonna go park on the dock and eat my sandwich until Alec gets here. Wow, this sucks. Since it's too windy to go fishing, why not have chips on a sandwich? That's that's Alec. It's uh 4:36. He, he made it. He made it for the the fun adventure we're about to go on. You excited? It's a little bit windy. A little windy. Are you kidding me? No. Oh, sh No! <laughs> Alright, this day is just going really well so far. Alright, put my uh, soaking wet hat back on. Oh, that feels great. Oh, oh god, that was a fish. What the? Oh yeah, for sure. But the water's cold. Yeah. They gotta be on the banks. I think on the rocks. Anything rocks rocks gonna, hold heat. Any, yeah, I was just gonna say, anything that's gonna hold heat. That's We're moving. We uh, we haven't got anything. This wind is, this wind is terrible. It, it broke my power pole. My hat went in the water. And uh, we're gonna go to the rocks. We couldn't find them in this creek. But we're thinking the air temperature is warm, but the water is cold. Therefore, the rock should be warm, which will, should warm up the water, and the bass like warm water. We're about to find out. How is there not just one fish chilling? Oh, there is one. Oh, there is one. Oh, dude. What is this? What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I feel so stupid. I thought for sure that was a fish. Biggest one of the day, guys. Look out, there's a lure on there. Got another lure on there. Biggest one of the day. Yeah. That's good. What? So that's good. Just broke the bell off. It's you, I'm telling you. So 
such a small world that he's... There's one. Oh, baby. Oh. Oh, dude, it's a pig. Grab that net. It's a tub. <laughs> oh, redemption. Redemption. Oh, where's he at? Yeah, baby. Nice. Oh, clutch. Oh, clutch jig fish, dude. <laughs> nice. Oh, dude. Oh, it's gone. Oh, it's go it hit it so hard. Dude, finally. Finally got a fish. Not a toad, but I mean, that's like two and a half. Pushing three. Good fish on the jig. All right, see you later, Leonard. Oh, we on him now, boys. Yes. Yeah, I would just try to get as close to the rocks as you pretty much can. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Whoa, what the hell? <laughs> oh, catch and release, boys. Ah, we found him. Drop the poles. We got him. Oh, that's a fish. Oh, I didn't know if that was a fish or not. What happened? It came off. Wow, I'm really good at fishing, guys. Please hit that subscribe button to learn more. There's one. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we got a fish. Yep, he's still there. Don't come off. Don't come off. Good boy. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Pike. Tank. Pike. Pike. Woo! We got a snake. It's alright. I'll take him. Alright. See you later, snakey snake. You got a fish? Mm -hmm. Oh what? You didn't say nothing? Boy, you back here just ninja catching these fish? Not saying nothing? Look at that, Alec caught a fish. I was just telling him, cast by those rocks. Look at that. Boom. Chatter, ch 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 chatter bait fish. Oh, now we're cooking with peanut oil, boys. Gotta be some fish. There's one. Oh, that might be a pike, dude. Nope, big bass. Stay down, stay down. Gotta grab the net. It's a crankbait, so I don't want to try to hook myself. Baby! Ow! We got it. And he's about the same size, actually. Should play him. Caught a, another fish. That's a square bill fish. We've had a few chatterbait fish, a few jig fish. Square bill fish. It's getting dark. I'm glad we didn't leave. The wind's finally calmed down. Catching, catching little chunkers like that. See you later, Richard. Did you get it off the rocks? Or are you in the water? Oh, I, for, I just, for some reason, I thought you had it in the rock. Are you snagging that toad? Oh, he, he had me. I don't know if he's... Wait, see, yeah, I see him. I see him. Oh, gosh, he's still there. He's still there. Whoa. We're going to we're gonna crash, though. Oh, he's there. He's there. I got him. I got him. Oh, oh, my. Oh, baby. We're going to... This, the boat's gonna crash. Exact view where I was like, yo, there's gonna be a pin. Dude. Oh, he, no way. he stayed pinned too. Chunky boy. Well, I barely hooked him. Oh, baby. But he's got crawfish down in his mouth. That makes sense. Oh, smokes. All right, well, got another fish here. Look at the gut on that. Yeah, he's a little, a little chunker for sure. It's a jig fish. All right, see ya, Lionel. Well, folks, 727, ending the day, Alec is putting his stuff in his truck. It was a very rough day out on the water, though. I've never fished in winds like this, and especially in Nebraska. I don't know what the deal was. The weatherman said 18. It was like 30 to 40, but it finally calmed down towards the end, and we managed to put together a pattern. Um, it's too dark to really do much now. Tomorrow... I am going to put together like a like a little recap of what happened today and explain to you how we found the fish because we really did have to find the fish. We, we went all across the lake through a bunch of different lures to figure out and dial the fish in. So I'm going to do like a little recap here real quick to uh, explain in case you guys are facing similar situations, not just the wind, but fall fishing in general and locating bass. How's it going, YouTube? 
like I had mentioned at the end of the video, I am going to go over kind of what we did to find the fish. It really did take a while to find them. We fished for at least an hour without a bite, maybe even two hours. Uh, basically, I, I, so I'm going to go over that and then I'll go over the rods and reels. And if you guys don't want to wait for me to go over the rods and reels, I'll put everything down in the description. But how we found those fish were, if you watched the video, you heard us talk about how the air temperature was warm, the water temperature was cold, and the rocks heat up, which heats up the water. And I know this tactic has worked. I fished tournaments where like that was the pattern is find the rocks. And they could be on the rocks for many different reasons. Maybe they don't care if the rocks hold the heat and the water's warmer. Maybe they're in the rocks to feed on crawfish or feed on shad. I don't know. So for those of you guys trying to fish in the fall, if you live in the Midwest or if your lakes are anything like where I live in Nebraska, they get really tough in the fall. They're either really good or really bad is usually kind of the pattern that I found over the years. And today in this video was it was one of those bad days, but luckily we were able to pull through with a few fish. Hopefully I entertained you guys with, you know, getting my chatterbait caught in the trolling motor, my hat going in the water, catching a tree branch, breaking the bill off my square bill. A lot of things went bad, but I didn't let that get to my head. I, things were always going to go bad when you're fishing, especially on a boat. I feel like if you're on a boat, things just go, go really bad in a hurry. But I didn't let that get to me. I had confidence. I stuck to it, and we caught some fish. So... <laughs> Sorry, I live next to like a small airport, so there's always like little planes. But I'm gonna go over the rods and reels that I was using. So the first bait that I was using when I caught fish was a jig. Now this isn't the exact color of the jig I was throwing. The, the jig I was throwing I actually lost in the rocks. Um, but it was a Missouri craw colored jig. It was a new tech jig, had just a little craw trailer. The reel on this is a 7.5 to 1 gear ratio, and the rod is a 7.2 medium heavy. This is a favorite summit rod. If you guys haven't noticed, I've been testing favorite rods out. I told you guys about a month ago that I was going to be testing different brands out for rods and reels and trying to find something that I think you guys would like. And after using these sticks for about a month, uh, I think they're pretty good. They've got a lot of selection. This one in particular is $350, which I know is ridiculous, but they've also got some lower end ones that are on like the $60 range and I've used them all and they all work really well. So I wanted to kind of just get a, get a good feel for their rod selection, which is why I'm using the high end one. And I'm using some low end ones as you're about to see here and just getting a feel which ones I like the best. So that was the setup for the jig and all we were doing was throwing this into the rocks and crawling it out just like a crawfish. The next setup that I had was this little crankbait right here. This is a 2.5 size square bill crankbait chartreuse black back. I was throwing that on a 5.4 to 1 gear ratio reel. I, I really like the slow the slow reels. For some reason when I'm fishing square bills, I like the slow reels. I don't know. I just feel like I work a square bill too quickly. Otherwise, I really do like to kind of burn them. So I, I try to stick with the lower gear ratio. And then the rod is a 6.6 six medium rod. Now normally I go with the 7 foot. Again, I'm just kind of trying out different rods just to see what I like. I wouldn't go any anything shorter than 6.6. Six, six. I'd go 6.6 six, six to 7 foot and just get a medium. It, this one has a nice soft tip, which is exactly what you want when you're fishing uh, square ball crankbaits. And this one is a favorite rush rod. This one runs for $250. So again, another high-end one, but I'm just kind of getting a, again getting a feel for like which ones I like. This one worked really well for a square bill. It also worked really well for a jerk bait but you just want something six, six to seven foot medium. Lastly was this little black and blue chatterbait. And this was a new tech crazy jig with just a little black, black and blue swim bait attached to it. And we were throwing that around rocks, just like the square bill, just like the jig. We we're just throwing around rocks. That was pretty much the only place we could find fish. For the reel, I like a 6.8 to one gear ratio reel. Something in that middle, like 6.4 to 6.8. Uh, is what I usually like for spinner baits and chatter baits. And then the rod is a seven foot medium moderate fast action. That is really important in fishing chatter baits or spinner baits is getting something with a backbone like a medium, but having that moderate fast action, it's a little bit softer tip, really allow them to eat this bait. And this one in particular is the favorite balance rod. This rod runs for $79.99. So it's kind of a, not a lower end rod, but just uh, not a super expensive rod. So those were the three setups that I was using jig, square bill, chatterbait. Again, all the information that I just went over is down below. Also, since I've been trying out favorite rods, you can use promo code phantom30 and get $30 off their phantom rod. I'll put the link to their website down below as well. Hopefully this video isn't too long. I, I really just wanted to go over what I was doing to help you guys because I struggled and it took me a while to figure it out and I kind of finally figured it out somewhat and I wanted to share that with you guys because you guys know Andrew Flair Outdoors loves teaching you guys how to fish. Well, that's all I got. Leave a thumbs up, drop a comment. Peace. I broke I broke a crankbait, which is always fun. But uh yeah, I broke that. I broke it. <laughs>